<clears throat> Chapter 3, Section 5, Graphing Linear Equations in Slope-Intercept Form. We'll spend a few days in Section 5, so that's why it says Part 1. So, quick recap of slope dude here. <laughs> what did slope dude say going uphill from left to right? Puff, puff, positive. Puff, puff, positive. So if I have a line that's going uphill from left to right, I know that my slope must be a positive number. Okay? What did he say going downhill from left to right? Nice negative. Nice negative. So if I have a line going downhill from left to right, I know my slope is a negative number. Does that make sense? We already knew the slope of a horizontal line from Hoy and Vux, right? What the O on Hoy stand for? Yeah. The O on Hoy? Um, that was a zero, right? That means my slope is zero. We also now know from slope dude that the slope of a horizontal line is zero because he says this is zero fun. We also knew the slope of a vertical line from Hoy and Vux. What the U on Vux stand for? Undefined. Undefined. And now we also know that slope dude says undefined on a vertical line. Everyone okay with that? Okay. So, here's just another quick overview. This is what the book tells us about slope. It's the same stuff. The line rises from left to right. It's got a positive slope. The line falls from left to right. It has a negative slope. If the line is horizontal, slope of zero. If the line is vertical, undefined slope. Any questions about our different types of slope? These are the only types of slope you'll see. Positive, <coughs> negative, zero, or undefined. Okay. Slope. You guys learned about slope uh, in pre-algebra, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. What's probably the most you heard it as? What over what? Rise over run. Rise over run, right? That is what it is. There's also a few other ways to represent slope. So the slope M of a non-vertical line passing through two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, is the ratio of the rise. We can also call our rise the change in y to the run, which is our change in x. Nice. Mm. So I want you to write this whole equation down. Okay. Write that down. These are the different ways we can write slope. Slope equals m. We use m to represent slope. That's the variable we use for slope. Slope equals m, which equals rise over run which equals our change in y over our change in x. And that equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You really, really, really need to know that last part of that equation. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That is our slope formula to find the slope between two points. You need to have that memorized. That needs to be memorized. You need to memorize that. Slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We will use that a lot in this class. Okay? Um, Last sentence, or last two sentences, is just saying stuff we've already learned. When the line rises from left to right, the slope is positive. When the line falls from left to right, the slope is negative. So they give us a little picture of a graph here. Here's our line. It's got two points on our line. We'll call this point x1, y1. This point x2, y2. Notice they drew a triangle between your two points. You'll always be able to draw a triangle between two points on a line that has some sort of slope. Okay? Uh, the, the triangle can help us find our slope. The height of the triangle is my rise, that's my change in y. The width of the triangle is my run, my change in x. So if I draw my triangle, find the height and the width, I have my slope, my rise over my run. Okay? Any questions about slope up to this point? Am I good to move on or do I need to wait a few seconds? You can move on. 
Move on, all right? Let's move on. Example one, describe the slope of each line, then find the slope. So how it wants us to describe it is positive, negative, zero, or undefined. That'll be our description, and then we'll actually find the slope, okay? So on letter A, our line is going uphill from left to right. It's rising from left to right. What would slope dude say there? Puff, puff, positive. So this slope is going to be positive. And that's my description of the slope. Okay? Now I need to actually find the slope. My slope is my rise over run. They've already drawn the triangle for us. What's the height of this triangle? One, two, three, four. So that's my rise. That's my numerator of my slope. The width of the triangle is going to be my run. How wide is this triangle? One, two, three, four, five, six. six. That's my run. That's the denominator of my fraction, my slope. Does everyone see how we got that? And did we say it's positive or negative? Positive. positive so I don't need to put anything in front of it because it's already positive if I don't have a sign in front. Always, always, always reduce your fraction if you're able to. Always simplify. Can 4 over 6 be reduced? Yes. Yeah, what are 4 and 6 both divisible by? 2. two. 4 divided by 2 gives me? 2. two. 6 divided by 2 gives me? 3. three. So my slope here is positive 2 thirds. Really? Questions how I got that? For this type of problem. Questions how we got that? No, sir. Okay, letter B. Our line is going downhill from left to right. It's falling from left to right. What would slope dude say on that line? Negative. <clears throat> negative. Nice negative. So my description is that the slope is negative. So whatever number I get for my slope, I need to make sure that it's a negative number because slope dude says nice negative. Don't worry about the numbers here that they already give you, but they did draw our triangle here. How tall is my triangle? Three. Three. Three units, right? So that would be my rise. How wide is my triangle? Two. 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 One, two. That's my run. Slope dude says nice negative, so what do I need to put in front of my slope? A negative. A negative. Everyone got that? Everyone see how the height is one, two, three? And the width is one, two. So I get three over two, and I gotta make it negative because it's going downhill from left to right. Can three over two be reduced? No. Nope, so the slope of this line is negative three halves. How are we feeling about slope after this first example? Uh, decent. decent. Iffy. Pretty good. Like I said, you can always draw a triangle between two points on your line. The height of the triangle will be the rise. The width of the triangle will be the run. Okay? Any questions on that? No. Can I move on? Yes. All right. Example two. The points represented by each table lie on a line. How can you find the slope of each line from the table? Where or what is the slope of each line? How am I going to find the slope here? Without graphing. Someone last hour said to graph it and then find the slope. We could do that, but there is a way to do it without graphing. Be a little more specific. You're on the right track. Think back to this slide. The change in y and x. Yeah, I'm going to find the change in y and the change in x, which is my slope formula. I'm going to use that slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, 
to find the slope of each line. Okay? How many ordered pairs from the table do I need to plug in here? And remember, an ordered pair consists of an X value and a Y value. Two, two. So just two ordered pairs, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think it matters which ordered pairs I use? No. no, I can use the first and the second, the first and the third, the first and the fourth, the second and the third, the second and the fourth, or the third and the fourth. It does not matter which combo of ordered pairs I use. I just need two of them. Okay? So first, second, third, fourth, which two do you guys want on letter A? First and second, I heard that first. So we use these right here. Use whichever points you want, though. We can use any two. Okay, how I get my y2, y1, x2, and x1, that just comes from the two ordered pairs that I pick. y2 just stands for the second y value of the two ordered pairs I'm using. So, yeah, what's my second y value of the two I'm using? 14. 14. So that's my y2. So what's my y1, my first y value? 20. 20. We okay with that? Yes. Okay, my x2 is my second x value. What's my second x value? 7. And what's my first x value? 4. Any questions how I identified x2, y1, y1, x2? Any questions how I got those? Now I'm able to just plug those into my formula. What do we say y2 was? Uh, 14. 14. Oh. Bring the minus sign from your formula down. Negative. What's my first y value? Negative 20. 20. Over, what do we say our second x value was? 14. Oh, seven. 7. Bring your minus sign from the formula. And what's our first x value? Is there any, any confusion how I plugged in here? Okay. Now I just simplify the numerator, simplify the denominator, and then simplify my fraction as a whole if I'm able to. So what's 14 minus 20? Negative 6. Negative 6. 7 minus 4? Three. 3. Can negative 6 over 3 be reduced? Yes. To what? Negative 2. Negative 2. So my slope on letter A is negative 2. Any questions how I got that? No. It does not matter which two ordered pairs I use, I'll get negative 2 every time on letter A. Okay? As long as I plug in correctly. We good? Okay, letter B. We've got first, second, third, fourth. Which two do you guys want? I heard four and one. There's my first and my fourth. We'll use those two points. You can use whichever ones you want. So, what is my y2, my second y value of the two ordered pairs I've picked? Uh, two. two. It's the second y value of the ones I picked, right? Bring your minus sign from the formula. What's the first y value from my ordered pairs that I picked? Two. two. Everyone good there? Over, what's the second x value that I picked? Five. Five. Bring the minus sign from the formula. What's my x1, my first x value? Negative one. Negative one. Now be careful here. I always need to account for the minus sign from the formula. And then if my x1 is negative, I also have to account for that as well. So does everyone see how I plugged in and everyone okay with how I plugged in? Yeah. You always have to account for that minus sign. And if your x1 is negative, you've got to account for that as well. Same thing if y1 was negative as well. Okay? Mm -hmm. 2 minus 2? Two? Zero. 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 Two negatives right next to each other makes a positive. positive. You could say stay, change, change. 5 plus 1 gives me 6. six. Zero divided by 6 gives me zero. 0. Slope of this line is 0. You okay with that? What kind of a line is this one? Um, slope. Huh? Slope of, zero. slope of zero. What kind of line has a slope of zero? Uh, uh, horizontal. Like, yeah. horizontal, right? Mm -hmm. So which axis is this line crossing? X. What? The y. the y axis. Where is it crossing the y axis? 
But what are all my y values? Two. Two. It's crossing my y axis at two. Okay? Does that make sense? Oh, okay. So, Any questions on B? No. Letter C. Last one on this slide. Three and four. I heard three and four. Yeah. Once again, it does not matter which two you pick. You can pick any two that you want. You're going to get the same, same answer either way. So, between the two ordered pairs that I picked, what's my second y value? Uh, nine. Nine. Bring the minus sign from the formula. What's my first y value? Six. Six. What's my second x value? Negative three. Negative three. Bring the minus sign from the formula. What's my first x value? Negative three. Negative three. Once again, you've got to account for the minus sign from the formula and the negative with x1 if that is a negative. Okay? 9 minus 6, 3. Once again, two negatives right next to each other like that makes a positive. What's negative 3 plus 3? 0. 3 over 0 gives me? Type it in your calculator. Tell me what you get. Type it in your calculator. Tell me what you get. 3 divided by 0. Zero what? Divide by, zero error. divide by zero error. You get an error. So what do you think it is? Zero. No solution. Oh, undefined. 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 Ah. So my slope of this line is undefined. I can't do a number divided by zero. Okay. So what kind of line is this one if it has an undefined slope? Uh, or yeah. Vertical, right? Which axis is it crossing? X axis where? X at negative three. Is. It's crossing my x axis at negative three. Everyone got that? Yeah. So be careful. Uh, it can be kind of confusing knowing which one's zero and which one's undefined. Let me show you a little trick that I believe Miss Southern taught me when I was in high school. We want to treat our fraction like a bag of groceries and treat the zero like an egg. What happens, or where do you want your eggs when you buy groceries? On top. on the top. If you keep them on top, when you get home, you get nice clean eggs. So zero. Okay? If your groceries have eggs on the bottom, what happens to the eggs? They get cracked, they get cracked or crushed into an undefined mess, right? Yeah. So that's how I remember it. Zero's on the bottom, it gets crushed. I've also heard people say if zero is under, it's undefined. Under, undefined. If zero is under, it's undefined. Always. Okay? Yeah, if zero is under, you can't have zero in the denominator, so it's undefined. Okay? That's how I remember it. You got to remember it one way or another, because if you put undefined here for B and zero here for C, they're both wrong. Okay? Any questions on example two, A, B, or C? Well, most of the time our horizontal lines are just crossing the y-axis. We learned that when we talked about hoi, right? Mm -hmm. So if it's slope of zero, I know it's horizontal. I know it's more than likely just crossing the y-axis. I know it's crossing the y-axis at 2 here because that's what all my y values are. Mm -hmm. Every y value is 2, so I know it's crossing at 2, okay? Same thing here. I had a slope that's undefined. I know it's vertical because of the slope. Back when we talked about VUX, we learned that was undefined slope, and we know that it's crossing the x-axis. Same thing here. All my x values are negative 3, so I know that's where it's crossing the x-axis. Okay? Any other questions on this example? Can I move on? What is slope-intercept form? What? Nope, that's my slope. What is slope-intercept form of a linear equation? Y equals, y equals mx plus b. That's what we're talking about next. Slope-intercept form. You need to have this form memorized. You need to know what it is. You need to know what each thing within the equation is. Y equals mx plus b. That's slope-intercept form. A linear equation written in the form y equals mx plus b. 
is in slope-intercept form. What variable do we use to represent slope? M. So the slope of the line is M within the equation. And the y-intercept of the line is B. So if your equation's in slope-intercept form, you can identify the slope and the y-intercept. That's why it's called slope-intercept form. You get the slope and you get the y-intercept in there. Okay? So if it's in slope-intercept form, the number that's being multiplied by x is your slope. No matter if it's written here first or here second. If it's being multiplied by x and it's in slope-intercept form, that is your slope. The constant, the number without the variable, will always be my y-intercept, whether it's here or here, as long as it's in slope-intercept form. Okay? Um, so it's crossing my y-axis at the y-intercept, which would be 0, comma b, whatever that b value is. The slope of that line is m. Any questions there? A linear equation written in the form y equals 0x plus b. What's 0 times x? 0, so just y equals b. is what we call a constant function. The graph of a constant function is a horizontal line because it's just y equals some number. Okay? Any questions on anything about slope-intercept form? Okay, moving on. Last example here. And I'll get y'all's y'all assignment. Find the slope and the y-intercept of the graph of each linear equation. So what form do I need it in in order to identify the slope and y-intercept easily? Y equals mx plus b. So if it's not in that form, I probably need to get it to that form first and then identify the slope and the y-intercept. Okay? Letter A, is that slope-intercept form? Yep. yep. So my m is my slope. It's the number being multiplied by x. So what is it in this case? Three. three. What would three be as a fraction? Three over one. one. Kind of want you all to get in the habit of knowing that because whenever we actually start graphing, we want the rise and over the run for our slope to be able to graph. Mm -hmm. Okay? B stands for my y-intercept. It's my constant, my number without a variable. What is it here? Four. Not four. Negative four. Negative four. And that's all it's asking for, so I'm done with letter A. Wait, I... Question? Mm, I don't even know how to ask it. So how do you do that? Like... It's already in slope-intercept form. Mm -hmm. Y equals mx plus b. I know when it's in this form mm -hmm. that the number being multiplied by x is my slope. Okay. And the number without the variable is my y-intercept. Okay. So this was already in slope-intercept form. So I know the number times x is my slope. The number by itself is my y-intercept. Okay? Letter B, y equals 6.5. Is that in slope-intercept form? No. Are you sure? Yes. Read the last sentence here on this slide again. Uh, y-intercept of the line would be... Oh, or, oh yeah. So is this in slope-intercept form? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's technically y equals 0x plus 6.5. Right? Mm -hmm. So that is slope-intercept form. So I can easily identify the slope and the y-intercept. What's my slope here? Zero. 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 And my y-intercept is? 6.5. 6 .5. Questions on letter B? We good? Mm -hmm. Letter C, is that slope-intercept form? No. 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 So I need to solve for y to get it in slope-intercept form. What would be my first step to get y by itself? No. We can add 5x to both sides, trying to move stuff away from the y. That would leave me with negative y equals 5x minus 2, because I cannot combine negative 2 and 5x. Okay? Is y by itself? No, we have a negative. I got a negative being multiplied by y. How would I get rid of it? Plus y. Divide by negative 1. Every term gets divided by negative 1. And changes all my signs. Positive 5x turns to? Negative 5x. Negative 2 turns to? Positive 2. Is this now in slope-intercept form? Yes. Yes, it is. So what's my slope? Negative 5x. Negative 5. Not, don't include the x with the slope. It's just the number being multiplied by x. Okay? 
or negative 5 over 1. And what's my B value, my y-intercept? 2. Two. Any questions on that? No. How do I feel about today's lesson? Good. Here's your assignment. We'll get it tomorrow in class. Any questions about the notes before I end the recording?